A federal high court in Abuja has adjourned the suit challenging the imposition of an annual levy for proof of vehicle ownership in Nigeria. Hi, welcome to What's Happening. These are the top 10 stories. At number one, a federal high court in Abuja has adjourned a suit challenging the imposition of an annual levy for a certificate of proof of vehicle ownership in Nigeria until March 4th, 2024. The Nigerian Bar Association section on public interest and development law brought the suit against the federal government, Lagos State Government and the Joint Tax Board. They argue that imposition of an annual renewal fee of proof of ownership certificates constitutes illegal multiple taxation and seeks an order restraining the defendants from harassing vehicle owners for non-payment of the levy. At number two, the Nigerian Senate has summoned security chiefs to appear before it in response to the increasing insecurity in the country with a specific date to be decided later. The motion on insecurity was sponsored by all 109 senators, highlighting the critical nature of the issue. The Senate condemned the rising incidents of kidnappings, banditry and the killing of innocent citizens. Senate President Gatswil Ababio expressed concern about the continuous banditry and kidnappings, stating that it has reached a point where middlemen are involved in collecting ransom on behalf of kidnappers. At number three, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC Radio 97.3 FM has initiated live broadcast on January 30th, 2024 as part of efforts to enhance the fight against economic and financial crimes in Nigeria. The launch of this radio station aims to strengthen public awareness and engagement in combating illicit financial activities. At number four, the Kogi state government has refuted rumors claiming that Governor Usman Ododo approved the establishment of the office of the immediate past governor to be located in the government house. The government labeled the news as the work of mischief makers and urged the public to disregard it. The statement emphasized that the misinformation was an attempt to create this affection and confusion, assuring the public that the former governor, Yahaya Bellu, is duly appreciated for his achievements in the state. The government also commended the media for exercising restraint and encouraged the public to fact check before spreading unverified information. At number five, the Federation Account Allocation Committee, FAAC, disbursed the amount of 1.62 trillion naira to the three tiers of government in December 2023 from the total revenue generated in November 2023, the National Bureau of Statistics report has shown. This amount marked an increase of over 200 billion naira compared to the 1.35 trillion naira disbursed in November 2023. The disbursements included 882.56 billion naira from the statutory account, 364.87 billion naira from exchange gain, 12.45 billion naira from electronic money transfer levy, and 360. 0.46 billion naira from value added tax. The federal government received 402.87 billion naira. States received 351.70 billion naira, and local governments received 258.81 billion naira. At number six, Governor Diko Umaru Reda of Castina State has donated 3.5 million naira to 35 recently rescued kidnapped victims from Tasha Nagule and Nahutu villages in Basari local government area. Each victim will receive 100,000 naira to aid their reintegration and businesses revival. Governor Reda praised the Nigerian army and security agencies for rescuing the victims unharmed. Similarly, Labour Party presidential candidate P2B visited the Al Qadria family, whose six daughters were recently abducted. Expressing concern over the rising kidnapping rate, will be called for collaborative efforts between the government and the public to combat criminality. At number seven, Liberia, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, and Uganda have topped the chart for police professional misconduct according to the latest Afrobarometer report. The survey highlighted instances where law enforcement demands bribes when citizens seek their assistance. 
Afrobarometer is a non-profit organization based in Ghana that conducts pan-African non-partisan surveys to provide reliable data on African experiences, perceptions of democracy, governance and quality of life. At number 8, the Lagos Metropolitan Area Transport Authority, Lamata, has reported that the Lagos Blue Line recorded 500,000 passenger traffic within the first five months of its operation. Osa Konyeha, the technical advisor on corporate investment planning at Lamata, revealed this during a Sustainable Urban Transport Summit in Lagos. The Blue Line, currently in its initial phase, covering Marina to Mile 2 with key stations was designed to alleviate traffic congestion in Lagos and has already met its initial projection of carrying 500,000 passengers per year within the short period of five months. At number nine, Nigeria has moved up five places in the 2023 Corruption Perception Index CPI ranking released by Transparency International and the Civil Society Legislative Advocacy Center, CISLAC. The country scored 25 out of 100 points compared to 24 in the 2022 CPI and is ranked 145 out of 180 countries, an improvement from 150 in 2022. The index measures perceptions of corruption in the public sector. While commending some improvements, the report highlights areas such as electoral corruption, judicial corruption, security sector corruption, failure to prosecute high-profile cases, and opaqueness in public institutions that need attention. Finally, at number 10, the African Union AU has expressed deep regret over the decision of Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger to withdraw from the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS. The AU Commission President Musa Faki Mohamed called for intensified dialogue between ECOWAS leadership and the three countries. The trail accused ECOWAS of posing a threat to their sovereignty. The AU expressed its willingness to provide assistance for fraternal dialogue without external interference. The three nations, facing sanctions from ECOWAS due to military coup, jointly declared their exit from the West African bloc on Sunday, forming an alliance of Sahel states, AES. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.